Welcome back, my dear students. So it's about time we start, you know, putting stuff where they need to be in this course, in this application. So what I want to do is in the config, I want to create a file here um, for our da database. So I'm just going to call this database.js. And this is just going to be a module that exports. And we're just going to export out some data here. And what I want to do is I want to say um, MongoDB. And then I want to put here the uh, database address. Okay. So let's come back here. Let's do that. Okay. So let's come go here and call this URL. All right. Now, if I go back to app, I'm going to import this file here so that I can use it. So I'm going to say const. Um, I'm just going to put some curly brackets here. Use the structuring. And let's do required. And this file is the helpers. Helpers. And it would be config. Actually, it's not a helpers. It's config. There we, there we go. And that's the database. And this is just going to have... just bring it down like this mongodb url and we're gonna put it here like that okay as you can see it's still connecting so it's still working i just wanted to put it there it's just something that we should be doing and in the future we're going to modify this a little bit when we deploy because we want to have a local address for our local deployment we want to have a um you know something for the uh production something for development something for production so we're going to have to write some code here later on but uh we're just getting things ready okay so now we are about to join uh not join but to start doing authentication we are application here. I'm started using uh, Compass from MongoDB, the community version. Again, I know I started using it in the beginning of the course, somewhere in the database section, and I'm using it back again after a couple lectures in the project section. Uh, you, you guys probably been using it for a while. So anyway, if we go to homepage and we go to login here, we don't have any anything for login yet. So let's go and create some routes for that. Let's go to our home routes right here. And let's see what we got for post login. We, do, we only have register and we only have get login here. We don't have a post login. So we need to get and write that right now. So you're going to come here and this is going to be a post request. And we're just going to say, test it out to see if it works. Works. Okay. Um, let's go and check that login view and see if that is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Login and it's sending a post method. Okay. Let's check it out real quick. enter and it looks like it's working great so now we got this working we have the database we're starting to create more configurations outside of our code so that way it, everything is more organized okay perfect i'll see you in the next lecture guys take care Welcome back, my dear students. So it's time for us to start playing around with Passport JS. Remember, that's a module that I um, introduced you in the beginning of this section. I believe it was in the first video or something like that, or the last section. Anyway, either way, this module is going to allow us to log in to our application. 
by using other services like Google, Facebook, Twitter, and all that stuff. But we are going to be using it to log in with our own credentials. And at the same time, we're going to be making our application a little bit more flexible because we can plug in any strategy. And when I say strategy, I mean any other code that will allow us to, to log into, like say Google or anything like that. Remember when I told you about strategy at first. So anyway, um, let's download npm install passport and passport local, which is a strategy that we are going to be using. Okay, local means that it's just going to check for the username or email and our password from the database. And enter. Make sure that we download it. Great. Now we need to include it in our, and I mean routes home index. Here is where we need to include it. So I'm going to say passport and I'm going just to require it here. And here we are going to also require a, call this passport local. That's the strategy. And here at the end, inside this passport local, there is an object that we can access called strategy. We can access that because that's the strategy, strategy we're going to be using. And you use that, you do that with every other um, strategy. You, you first down in, do npm on the strategy you want and you take out the strategy from there so here we're going to say something like local strategy something like that great so now we can use it let's go to our login remember to to write some of the to put some comments on your router and your code, okay? Guys, I don't do it because I want to save time. I don't want this co course to be three, uh, 600 lectures, okay? All right, so, um, so now that we have our passport, let's use a function called authenticate. You can get all this information in the documentation, and I read it a lot, okay? Actually, they are using uppercase, so let's use that as well right here. I know I saw that somewhere. Okay. So very common sense once you get to know it, <laughs> but it's, um, it could be a little mess in your head if you don't know what you're doing. So that's what I'm here for. So let's use this password authenticate function. And the first parameter is going to be the strategy that we are going to be using. I'm going to be using the local strategy. And the second parameter is an object with some properties and values. These properties and values are going to do different things depending whether we uh, log in or not, authenticate or not, okay? So one of the properties is called success redirect. And this is where it's going after it is authenticated. We're going to send this person to admin or this user. And there is another one very similar to that, but this one is failure. And that's the one I'm interested. There are a couple more. I'm just interested in just this two. And this would be to log in. Let's do one more. And what I want to do is failure flash, just so that we can get a session or a little flash message error. Okay, and then we can use that. And let's set that to true. Now I'll show you that flash. It's like rec uh, flash error, like that. We get something like that, that we can use, okay? Anyway. So once that's done, here we can pass in, and we have to, our requests and our response or our nets which is not here. We need a net function. Remember that this is how we go to the net request with this function. So we pass all that in uh, because we want this function to be called immediately once this is executed. We're passing all that, okay? So there's nothing else we need to do here, to be honest with you. Now we have to just play around with some of the uh, functionality. On the next lecture, we are going to we're going to test our passport, okay? We are done with this first lecture, which was to um, the first part, 
which was to use it. Now we need to test it on the next lecture. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next lecture. Welcome back my dear students. So it's time for us to, for us to start testing out to see if we are tr communicating with Passport, right? If we are in sync with it. So what I want to do is I want to turn on our app, Nodemon app js make sure that everything is working it's not breaking that's great now here on top and i'm gonna we're gonna take this to another file later on guys because we don't want this mess here but i want to start testing things out so there is a function that passport has called use or, me, or this method it's like a middleware okay and then we're gonna new up the local strategy here and we're gonna pass on parameters now, since we are, and this went too far, okay. Since we are using for login, let's go back to the login. Let's just make this smaller here. Our login is not working. Don't tell me I did. Let me see what I did. Oh, that's because we have this code here that we have to comment out there we go so we don't have a username by default passport as of this video as of the recording of this video and this version is uh, passport 0 0.40 and passport local 1.00 as of this version passport still by default only authenticates the username right so we need to modify that we need to modify so it authenticates the emails okay remember this is a pre-built code so there's a lot of things that it, that we have to there are a couple of things that we have to override so we can and they provide this for us and i looked it up in the documentation which you can also find right here if you look for let's do command f or control f and do username i believe is username field there we go see that we can override those okay so let's pass this object that's the first parameter and we're going to say username field that's a property and it's going to be email i don't think we need the underscore no we don't okay so we have this object here in the local strategy now we need to we have a callback here and we're going to get the email we'll get and that's um, make sure this callback is right the email will get the uh, pass password and we get a function called done uh, this function called uh, done is a function that's used a lot here to basically return some values okay that lets password know that we're done with it and it, it executes some other extra code that we need okay so once that's done um we can test it out let's see if this works console.log and let's just test out the password or something like that let's see if it works so we're gonna do a console log oh something's going on here let's see email is not defined oh that's because we need to put this in strings there we go that works so once we go ahead and hit the submit here this is what's going to happen let's go back to our routes and explain this passport authenticate is going to fired uh it's going to do some things behind the scenes and you know it's going to either redirect to admin failure to redirect or failure flash so if it was successful it's going to redirect here if it fails it's going to redirect here and if it has some type of error we're going to get a flash error now we are not really doing anything yet because what we got here is that we are hooking up into the local strategy, but we're still not going into the database and, and verifying the user there. So this is not doing anything yet. And we're still not even working with sessions. So uh, right now 
hentai. I just want to see if we get some of the information from the form here because this is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to grab all the data from the form, the request, that body, that email, and that passport, password, and pass it in here to this local strategy, and we can use it. Okay? That's what it's supposed to do. So I'm just going to put Edwin Diaz at edwindiaz.com. Login is going to stay, stay hanging there, and we're supposed to see the password here, the password. And as you can see, it says one, two, three. We can also test it with the email just to make sure. Come back here. Edwin Diaz, one, two, and three. Enter. And you can see that the email is right here. Okay, guys, if you're not using a IDE like this one, I suggest Visual Studio. Uh, I probably told you that in the beginning of the course, just because the terminal is here. Okay. Anyway, um, so we are actually doing pretty good. Everything is working good. We're getting, uh, we're using Passport already. All we have to do is jump into the database, verify the user, return some data, and voila. Good. So thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Lecture. <laughs> Welcome back. All right. So we need to jump into the database and try to verify our user. Let's go back here to the documentation, which I like to look at all the time. And as you can see here, we are going into the database. We are checking for username. In this case, in our case, we're going to check for email. We have this callback function coming back. We're checking if error, we turn error. If not user, we turn this. Basically, this is perfect. This is exactly what we need. Okay, perfect. So let's do it from scratch. We have the user model, right? Because we have the user right there. And we just got to say find one. Why am I, I'm not copying and pasting, guys? Because I want you guys to do the same thing I'm doing. Type it. It helps me as well, okay? Remember this stuff. It's a lot of information. So we're going to check for our email field to see if the email is there. And then if it is, then we bring back the user, right? If we find that email, even if we don't find it. So um, if error, actually, I believe that callback but this is a promise that we're using here. So it's a little different. We can do a catch and catch for the error, but uh, we can just do if not user. We don't have to do all the checkups, like if error and all this. I mean, it's up to you if you wanna go ahead and follow the documentation with a callback. You can do, you can do it. I mean, it's up to you. I'm doing it my way. If not valid password, you can also check for that if you have that function somewhere checking. But that's okay. I'm going to return the done function and I'm going to return the null because uh, I think that's for the error. False because the user is not there. And we're going to return some type of message. That's what I was reading in the documentation, guys. No user found. Great. Now, how can we display this stuff? Right now, if what do we have in our database, we have in the CMS, we don't have any users. Let's uh, create a user real quick. I don't have any user. I'm going to create a user called Edwin Diaz at Edwin Diaz dot com. One, two, three, one, two, and three register. OK, so I'm going to try to log in and see what's going to happen. One, two, three, log in, and that stays hanging. Okay. That's because it's working. But if I put another password here, like a random password, I said login. It's actually, it's making me look really bad right now. Let's put another different email that's not available. Login. And as you can see, it gets goes back to the same login. Let's put the email and the password. We don't have actually one for the passport uh, password to verify for the password, right? Um, we don't. We should actually do that. Um, 
usually what we do is we use BigCrypt in another file and or the model, create some type of method and bring that method here and use it, right? Uh, just like they're doing right here in the documentation. Let me see. I'm going too far again. Right here, they have some type of valid password password and they are doing this from the user model let me see if they have that model here somewhere so that i can show it to you so let me what they doing here do you see that valid pass password they have a compare let me see if i can go back to the model and show you in the user you can create oops you can use the schema here and say schema that uh, methods and you can generate a function that you can use in your user for example console like this that log using um, schema method i wanted to show you this because this is very useful and this is exactly what they're doing. I'm going to show you that this is what they're doing over there. You might want to give this some type of name. So we're going to call this, um, I don't know, test, test method or something like that. Okay. And let's go back to our index and let's execute this once we find an email for that user so i'm gonna come here and we say user um what did we call it test method okay and see what can we, what do we get okay so let's go back to our login i just want to show you one two and three login and you can see that it says using schema methods. Okay. So real quick, this is how we can create some methods that we can use in our, in our schemas. Okay. So we can come here and create some type of uh, comparison for our, what you might call it? a um, big crypt because that's what we need let's go back here and we need to uncomment this out and let's write the code here okay let's say bcrypt dot compare this is the function from bcrypt js that we we use in bcrypt right here because we are we also have a registration here so yep we are using it right here. Okay, great. Okay. So we are going to grab the password that's coming from the form, which is this one. And the user password that's coming from the database. We're going to compare it and we, we are going to have this callback with an error or some other property that is going to be either true or false. And I like to call this matched like this. Okay. So if error, then we just return that error or throw it, throw the error. But if it's matched, then we just return uh, done and no let's go back here again went too far <laughs> done no false and the message well that's uh, for password incorrect okay Well, we don't have a password incorrect yet, but we will uh, create one. It would be nice to have one. Okay. Um, actually, we can right here. Okay. So we can return that there. Anyway, let's finish this one. So if it's match, we return that and the user. And here we return this guy right here. That would be nice. I'm just going to copy and paste. I got tired writing. 
and paste that. Okay. Perfect. So we're gonna make sure that this works on the next next lecture, guys. I'm gonna leave you to it so you can write it down. Again, if you try this code now, it might not work 100%. So whatever we have to fix, we do it in the next lecture. Thank you so much. See you then. Welcome back, my dear students. So I hope you guys are having a lot of fun and learning a lot. Hopefully, I'm not going too fast for you, okay? So I'm going to recap a little bit just in case you got, you got a little lost. We are hooking up into Passport by using this code here which is coming from the form, right? Passport Authenticate, we are telling Alice and we're using a local strategy. Local strategy, you know what to do when you when we invoke the local strategy, right? So the local strategy, strategy behind the scenes is gonna look for some values that are coming from the form that it's expecting, like the email and things like that, right? It grabs those, okay, and uses it behind the scene. So right now here, these properties are just set there so in case of if it's successful or not successful um things that i need that it will do okay we're passing the request and the response and the nets so that our passport can use those okay behind the scenes so that local strategy when we knew it up when we create this new instance here right when we knew it up actually not this instance but when we knew it up we are passing in some values that we're overriding here because it's checking for username by default. So we really don't have to have this. If you're using username, you don't have to have that, but we're using email. Okay. So we have to override username, the username field. So it's pulling this from the form and we got this callback, this function called done that we use with it, that we do some things behind the scenes too. Um, and then here we're using our, model to search the database to do a query for that user that has that email once we find that or not find it we do certain things with it right if we don't find the user we returned a message here the user not found here are some parameters i think this is a narrow parameter and the user we're setting this to false and to null as you can see it in the documentation okay they are here null and false they got more explanation about what each of those um properties are or values are okay um so and here we're just using bigcrypt to compare that pass the password that's coming from the form uh with the one in the database and returning the result we either return an error or we return another value that's either true or false and we are just doing that check here. Now, let's come, let's go back and let's see if what happens when we try to log in with the right credentials. One, two, and three, enter. And it takes me to log in and you can't see anything there. It's still telling me that it's that it needs password initialized. Okay, so this is another part that we need. And that's why I told you that that code was not gonna work in the last lecture. We still need to plug in a couple of things. So as far as I remember, there is something else that we need. Uh, command F, let's go passport dot initialize right here. We need to, we need this two here. Okay, we also need body parser, but we got that. We also got express session. We only need this two things here to do that the secret and we have that okay we have this okay so all we need is this two as far as I remember let's go back to app and I want to do this right when we are doing sessions okay right below flash I'm gonna do it and I'm just gonna put a comma here passport like that okay Let's go back here and refresh. Oops, and we got another error. Let's see where the error is. Oh, we are not logging in passport here. Uh, we're not, we don't have passport. So passport require 
password. All right, let's try it again. Okay, now it's working. Let's come back here, one, two, and three. Log in and fail to serialize a user into session. So let's go back to here and there is something else we're still missing, okay? Don't worry guys, we're gonna get it. This arrow here, serialize, is another piece of code that we need. Serialize, okay? So what it is is that Passport needs to serialize the user. It needs to grab the data, whatever data it is, if it's an object or something, serialize it. So it is easier to transmit that data, okay, into a session. So let's come back here and copy this, okay, and see where we're going to be putting this. Um, Where's the passport use? Okay, I'm just gonna be putting right here on this route. I'm gonna paste it in there, okay? And this should be okay because as you can see, this is using our, our the user that we have already and it's using Mongoose or something like that because it says find by ID. I think this method exists in Mongoose. We're gonna find out in a minute if it works or not. Guys, remember that I love getting errors in, app in the application just because it's gonna show you every step of the way on how I resolve them. You have seen how many errors we got, like two or three already, right? And look at that, look at that. How many things have you learned? Every, every error that, that we have encountered, we have fixed, right? So when you encounter those, you know exactly what you're missing. So you can come back to these lectures and look at them. All right. I don't like to make perfect lectures just because you guys don't learn as much. Believe me. I wish an instructor would have shown me this information when I was first learning. It took me a long time to realize some of the errors. Weeks, days, months sometimes. So anyway, so now we should be good. Let's go back here. And now we are, we can say that the user has been, is being serialized. And there we go. Now we're going to admin. Now, one thing to keep in mind that I want you guys to be aware is that automatically, once we are doing this, we're using sessions, okay? Because if you look at Passport Initialize, right? We're initializing Passport, but we're also using Passport.Session. This is actually going and applying a rec, a request user. So we have this request user that we can access anywhere. Okay, this um, type of session that we can access anywhere. Okay, and we can convert that to some type of variable later on to use it. Okay, so now it looks like it's working, guys. We, we need to kind of refactor our code a little bit and play around with it. But what I want to do also is that I want to show you that it is working by using that rec user that I told you about. So I'm going to make this a little smaller. And when we logged in, log in, I want to be able to say, um, show this logout. Right now it's showing, but maybe we can put our username here or something, okay? So that would be fun to do. So let's play around with, with this application a little more on the next lecture. Take care. All right, welcome back, my dear students. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to put maybe the username for our user or the first name or something here in our, in our application just to show you that it's logged in okay so um let's go back here and i told you that we have this rec user available and let's actually do it here let's just say rec locals that user and this is just creating a global variable somewhere that uh, we can access anytime just because we we don't want to get this rec user and pass it in to a view it's just a lot of uh, messed up code it just takes a lot of work and I don't want to do that because it, anyway we will have to pass all that in to a view when we are the request to a view and we don't want to do that we want a better way to access that um, so rec rec user 
and we can do a little trick here and we can if that use is not available we can uh, apply null to it or something like that I was gonna put an empty string I remember I saw this trick somewhere when I was first learning Node.js somewhere um, let's go and I use this in, a lot in JavaScript but Coming from a PHP background, this can be confusing. You'd be like, what in the world is he doing? Um, even though in PHP, this is for a or, it's the same thing. It's just when you come to JavaScript, you don't think of objects most of the time, right? But in Node.js, that's what we do. Anyway, um, so we have this user available to us when we log in. Let's go back to the front of the page. Let's log in again. And if we put a, a wrong password here, click login it's going to redirect us but we don't have any errors so that's something that we also have to do and i want to do that in this lecture let's see we have time one two three login okay let's go to the let's find that logout if i can find it because that's hidden somewhere hidden uh, layouts admin and i'm gonna do command f and say logout and I think that's it. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, that's what it is. Um, maybe I can use one of these guys. Let me see if that's the one. I'm just going to put an H there. Refresh. Yeah, that's the one. I'm going to put one of these and see if that looks right. Right here. And I'm going to call this... Let's see if they have one user F and yeah, it has a little face there and it would be nice if we can say, um, if user, user, and I hope you see what I'm doing here. This is just an if statement in handlebars. Okay. So if we have a user, we're going to see the user there, but we want to see the user first name or something like that. Refresh and voila. Let me make sure that you can see that. You see that? Look at that. Beautiful. So now we know that something is going on here, right? Okay. But later on, we have to delete this. We have to delete that uh, session. Okay. That value. All right, so the next step is at showing some type of error here in our login when he's not able to log in, right? Uh, I told you that in the beginning that we were able uh, to log in to return some type of flash error message, right? And that's exactly what we do with when we use this in Passport message. This uh, becomes a error. So... Um, Let's go back to app here. Let's go all the way to the bottom here. Rest that locals that error. So we're gonna create this variable called error, and is passport is going to create this session or flash that's gonna be called error, and we're gonna check for that. Okay. Um, let's go to partials admin actually home. And I thought I have messages. I do have messages here. I'm going to create an extra one here in partials, paste it in here, and I'm going to check for errors. For error. And I'm going to display the error here. Okay. Hopefully I'm correct in there. And login. There we go. See that? Incorrect passport. Uh, password. Okay. Um, what if I put another email that's not available? No user found. Okay. Perfect. And if I put the right one, one, two, and three, login, we get redirected. Okay. So we learn a lot of cool stuff in this lecture, guys. Go ahead and rewind the video. Look at it a couple more times. If you are confused, if you have any questions, put it in the discussion. It's very easy to make a mistake using Node.js, using JavaScript, right? Um, and then you don't have a lot of uh, um, errors that you can check. But with what I've shown you so far, you should have an easier 
uh, way to do this. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you on the next lecture. Welcome back, my dear students. So it's time for us to start uh, logging our users out just because, and I found the logout function here. Okay, very easy. In the request, there is a logout method that's added. We can use that to log out. Okay, so let's go to our index home, well, routes, home index. Okay, and let's create this logout. I would like to keep my login and log, uh, login post and all my login functions close. Okay. So this is the login and I want the logout right here. So I'm gonna say router dot uh, get. And that's gonna go to logout. And of course we're gonna have the request and the response. And here we just say, well, the request we activate this logout function and we redirect to homepage or something or to login, right? Cool. Let's test this real quick. Homepage. We still see, we don't see the user and let me tell you why we don't see the user name here that's because our server is always refreshing with nodeman okay so we're gonna have to log in again to see this in action one two and three log in and you can see that it get, it shows me my name right here now if i click logout or if i go to logout let's go to logout enter See, it takes me back to login. If I go to admin, my user name is not there. Or my user first name is not there, right? Pretty cool stuff. So that's it for this lecture. That was short, right? So on the next lecture, we are going to be playing around with this uh, form right here and creating our logo right here, which will be pretty cool. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next lecture, guys. Take care. Welcome back, my dear students. So we have this logout uh, form here that we don't know what in the world it's happening, but this is Bootstrap, of course. And um, we need to make sure that we know how that works, right? So let's go to our admin handlebars layout. And here where we click logout, okay? Um, this is doing something. It's activating a modal called example modal here okay we should change the name of that i'm gonna look for that example modal we're doing control f or command f and data target somewhere and i think that modal i'm gonna see where that is included i don't remember to be honest with you but uh huh Right here, this is where the modal is. So we're gonna find it by doing example modal just by itself. We should, we could if we wanted to put this somewhere else. I'm gonna call this um, logout modal. You know what, just, let's just leave it like that. You can, if you want, uh, Call it logout modal, but you have to change all these fields as well. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Maybe later on we'll do it. You, if you want, you can do it yourself. Anyway, so we are in this modal here, and when we click the logout, it's taking me to this URL here, which that's not where I want to go. I want to go to logout like this. Okay, and I think that's it. Um, Log out. All right, let's just refresh. Log out. And it takes me back here. Let's log in. One, two, and three. Log in. 
cancel, log out. If we go to admin, it's not there. Pretty cool stuff, right? That's it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture, guys. Welcome back, my dear students. So in this lecture, we're going to be learning how to protect our routes. There are times when we might want a user not to see certain files or not to do certain things with uh, certain uh, data, right? So what if we don't want the user that's not logged in to be able to see the post here, right? Every user that is going to be seeing or creating posts needs to be logged in and even categories. So let's learn how to do that. Now I was looking around and I think I found something here. Uh, it's called rec. This is added to our request. It's called is, out, is authenticated. This function is going to allow us to make sure that the user is logged in. Okay. I think this user was having some type of issue here, but I know that that function works. Okay, and the other tutorials are using it as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a helper here. I'm gonna call this authentication.js. You can join this or, you know, call it however you want. It doesn't really matter for me. So I'm gonna say module.exports and we're gonna export some function here. And we're just gonna say user authenticate it okay and this is gonna have uh, the requests the response and the nets here to go to the nets so now here we can just create an if statement and we can say if rec uh, is authenticating you can see it right here then we just go to the next request Okay, whatever that is. And else we just go and redirect to login or something like this. This next is going to stop any executions after it, but just to make sure, let's just return it. Okay, um, that's it. So now when we want to use this functionality, we just have to include it wherever we need it and we need it. Uh, let's go to the post routes and I'm going to include it right here. I'm going to say construct. I'm going to use the structuring. So the constants require, um, we got to go out. And do to authentication. There we go. Now we're gonna take this user authenticated out of there, and we're gonna use it, right? Come back here, and I'm gonna plug it into all my routes because I don't want anybody in the post admin to be snooping around if they're not authenticated. Now, if I go to admin, and remember that our server is refreshing with node month, so because it's refreshing, our session is lost. So if I refresh here, this is going to redirect me to login because we're not logged in anymore, right? So let's log in. One, two, and three, log in, and now we can access our posts. See that? But if we log out and we try to come back here and we try to go to post, nothing, okay? We shouldn't even be able to access the admin at all, okay? So we can, we can resolve that, right? Let's come back here and we can take that to index. Come back here and plug that in there like this. Now, if we try to come back to admin. Okay. Hmm. Oh, we're missing a little bit of a. There we go. Refresh. We can't access admin at all. Okay. It's better that you put this everywhere just because you never know if somebody's going to send a direct 
requests and we don't want anybody we don't want to take our chances okay so I'm gonna put this in categories now one word of advice we are going to be uh, creating some more things in admin so you might not want to protect all admin because it's just gonna be chaos every time we create a new uh, feature in admin we have to log in to see it so you might want to take that off from admin for now okay so that way we don't have to keep logging in and logging in all the time okay so I'm just gonna comment take it off from now but now you know how to use it right okay later on we'll plug it in but now you know how to do it thank you so much guys for watching these lectures thank you so much for the good reviews that some of you have given me and for those of you that have given me bad reviews in the beginning please review those reviews review it and fit them okay <laughs> thank you so much i'll see you in the next lecture guys take care